Okay, I want to finish off, it's going to take me a couple more minutes, a few more minutes to finish off by showing you every way I can think of that these quadratic equations that you can factorise arise and the various different ways you need to cope with a few complications. Okay, first complication here. I've got a quadratic because it's got an x squared and it's equal to zero. The number in front of the x squared is not one, so it makes factorising slightly more difficult. You'll remember I've done a video explaining how to factorise these type of uh, equation, uh, ex quadratic expressions. Let me just remind you. The number in front of the x squared multiplied by the number term. So you do 5 multiplied by minus 14 and you get minus 17. You then ask yourself the question, what two numbers multiply to this minus 70 and add up to minus 3? Can you think of two numbers? Well, negative 10 and positive 7 times to minus 70 and add to minus 3. So I said to you, when trying to factorise this, you can write 5x in one bracket, 5x in the other, because you've got 5x squared, so you put 5x in both brackets, and you put minus 10 and plus 3 here. And then I said, make sure you cancel whatever you can in either expression. And here, 5 goes into this, so I can write that simply as x take away 2, 5x plus 3 equals 0. And hey presto, I factorised this. That was step 1. Two expressions equal to 0. So either the first is 0 or the second is 0. So 5x plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to minus 2, or 5x plus 3 is 0, so 5x equals minus 3, and x is minus 3 divided by 5, or a mathematician would write that as minus 3 fifths. Again, I would like you to check in an exam that substituting these back into the original quadratic gets you 0. Okay, there's one complication where factorising is ever so slightly harder, but you'd be expected to do this in the exam. Another example. I've got a quadratic equation equal to zero, so I can use the method I just said to try and factorise it. However, sometimes you can be a bit ingenious. 5x squared, 15x, 10. Can you think of anything that goes into all of those? Well, the number 5 does. So if before you do your factorising, you divided both sides of the equation by 5, 5x squared divided by 5 just gives you x squared, 15x divided by 5 just gives you 3x, and 10x divided by 5 just gives you 2. Of course, 0 divided by 5 is still 0. I have These two equations are effectively the same, one's a multiple of the other, but this one factorises way easier. It simply factorises to x plus 1, x plus 2, and that's equal to 0. So the solutions are x is minus 1 or x is minus 2. Again, you need to check that those work by substituting back into the above. So one little tip for you there. One more example. 3x squared plus 12x equals 0. Trying to factorise... Remember the very first type of factorising when we did algebra here, before we started saying what times is to this adds to this, what goes into 3x squared and 12x? What divides into those? Well, 3 does, because 3 goes into 3x squared and 3 goes into 12x, and also there's an x that goes into both. So divide out the 3x, 3x squared divided by 3x just leaves you with x, 12x divided by 3x leaves you with 4. That's equal to 0. You've got an expression e times another expression equals 0. So either 3x is 0 or x plus 4 is 0. If 3x is 0, the only solution is x is 0. And x plus 4 equals 0, the only solution is x is minus 4. There Another thing to bear in mind when you're factorising, if you don't have a plus c, a plus number term, factorising is usually quite a lot easier. Okay, on the next slide I've got some questions for you to attempt yourself. Pause the video, 
have a go. After five seconds, I will put the answers up and you can unpause to check your work. Here you go. Please pause the video to have a go at these. Moving on to the answers, the answers look as follows. Pause the video to mark. Okay, I'm actually just gonna finish now with one last thing to mention. Look at this example, x squared plus five x equals negative four. I've got a quadratic and it equals minus four. My method of factorizing only worked because I had a quadratic equal to zero. Currently isn't equal to zero, it's equal to minus four. I can't go on and factorize. If I tried to factorize here, I would get this. Two numbers that multiply to give minus four, it could be infinitely many, like the diamond and circle question I asked you before. So before you even go there, what you do, you make the quadratic equal zero. How do I make this zero? Add four to both sides of the equation. I would get x squared plus five x plus four equals zero. Now I can factorize, I'm not gonna go into the details, but this factorizes to x plus one, x plus four equals zero. So x is minus one, x is minus four. They're your two answers. Substitute them in to the top and check they work. Let's just do it. Let's put minus one in. Minus one squared is one. Five times minus one is minus five. One minus five is minus four. And I've got an answer. Have a look here. I've got a quadratic x squared. It's equal to three x plus four. I wanna make the right hand side or any of the sides equal to zero so I can factorize. So I'm gonna subtract three x off both sides. I'll get x squared minus three x equals four. And I'm gonna do one more line, subtract four off both sides to get x squared minus three x minus four is zero. I could have done that all in one step by subtracting three x plus four. Then I try and factorize this, which factorizes as follows. I'm not gonna go into the detail here. So x is four or x is minus one. Again, check these answers work in the above equation. The last slide, I want you to have a go at a few uh, yourself. Just before we do that, I actually just wanna show you one more thing. Here's another one, not equal to zero, a quadratic equal to five. Subtract five off both sides to get x squared plus seven x plus 10 equals zero. Factorize now, x plus two, x plus five equals zero. So x is minus two, or x is minus five. Again, check those answers work in the top. So on the next slide, there are some of these questions to try yourself, exactly like the ones I've just gone through. Firstly, make all the quadratics equal to zero on the right hand side then factorize and solve. Pause now to have a go at these questions. In five seconds, I'll show the answers. And the answers are as follows. Thank you very much for taking time to look at this clip. Hopefully it's explained factorizing quadratics so you can solve them from the very easiest cases all the way through the unit two syllabus to all the difficult cases there are. Thank you very much.